So you may have heard of the book or audiobook called How to Shoot a Video That Doesn't Suck. That's mm. usually not a word that I, I commonly use myself, but that's actually the title of a book that I highly recommend. We're going to be talking about it in this video and kind of sharing my take on each of the things that I learned from that great book. And, and hopefully this video won't suck. Yeah, I'm trying to follow those principles that I learned. Stick around and see if it does. Yeah, let us, let us know afterwards. Okay, so the author, Steve Stockman, he wrote this book. He's got a lot of uh, experience in, in film and Hollywood and all, all types of stuff. And I suppose you have a copy of the book lying around, do you, Nate? I do. Right oh, here. see? I actually keep it in my pocket. Here he goes. He's got <laughs> I do. I have it on my phone. I was trying to capture him. See, I wanted to see the book itself, but we didn't have a hard copy. Oh, well, go ahead. All right, so I've listed a lot of the points that he makes in his book, and okay. I want to share how it applies to me kind of in the YouTube world. Hmm. So he talks about thinking in shots. So a lot of times, kind of my take on this is a lot of times we'll just hit record. We're, we're at a family function or there's some activity where we just want to hit record and we got to get everything. But listening to this audiobook, he kind of taught me to think in shots. And, and I want to hear your perspective on this too, because you're, you come from a different type of filming background. Yeah. You know, being an actor. But to me, filming in shots is like, okay, I want to get a... Thinking in shots. Uh, thinking. Yeah. yeah. Thinking, thinking in, in shots. shots. It's like, okay, I want to... I want to get a shot of of this bus going by. I don't know what I'm what movie I'm filming yeah. here, but so I get a shot of the bus going by, and then I want to get a different shot of Scott walking off the bus. And so now I'm going to set up over here. So instead of just okay hitting record, it's like okay, what shots do I want to get that will tell kind of tell a story? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, so. that's good. Yeah, I, I I mean I think that's basically how most directors work in terms of shooting narrative films, right? Mm -hmm. They show up and they go, okay, here's our set. And truly, a lot of times, they may have thought about this the night before at the earliest. But sometimes they literally just show up, they see what locations have given them, and they go, okay, here's the scene. We're going to want to get you coming off the bus. We're going to want a wide angle of the bus, an establishing shot of the bus coming into town. If we can get up on that clock tower, we're going to grab... You know what I mean? So there is, there's a... You need to see the whole picture. I think, you know, I, without having read the book, but I mean, you kind of do that no matter where you go. Like you say, if something comes up and you go, I, I got to get this. It's like my, my mind automatically envisions, where's the sun? Where's the lighting coming from? And how will I frame the object with, so you you're, know, you're just some... trying to get that perfect shot. Yeah, you want so the like, shot. You're, just, you're yeah. looking for that, that moment. <laughs> the angle that's just going to pop and look yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so tip number four. I'm gonna, we're going to come back to another aspect that really helped sink in something. But let's go to number two. He says, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. And um, hmm. I, I think that there's definitely exceptions to that. But that means that you can't have the camera too far back. It's like kind of getting closer so you can see the, the whites. Can you see the whites of our eyes? Are we breaking this rule? No, I think I we're know. okay. Hopefully we're okay. Man, yeah, what yeah. if we're breaking yeah. the rule? We totally like blew it. On this video too. sucks. <laughs> so anyway. Um, you want detail. If you're telling a story, I think that's what mm -hmm. they're saying. You know, you, I think at a certain point, the wide establishing shot is fine. But generally speaking, when it comes to YouTube videos, yeah, you do want to be able to see expressions and, and mm -hmm. kind of the detail of the people. And I mean, I, I, found, I found that I like to mix it up. But if, meaning I'll do some back far away shots, but then I'll, I'll definitely get some close up shots. Because in YouTube, we're, we're talking to one person right through the, the lens of the camera here. And if you can't even, we, we, can, we make a connection through through eye contact. And if you can't see the whites of my eyes, we don't make that we don't make that connection. So mm, that, that's, that's what point. that, that yeah. point means to me. All right, keep. Oh no, oh this is shot number three. Is what I meant when I said four. Keep your shots under ten seconds long. Okay, so when you start thinking about shots as being. It, it, I'm not thinking about, okay, I'm going to hit record and I'm going to film a 10-minute episode. This really applies to telling a story or creating a, a vlog or a home video that people actually want to watch. If I'm uh, hiking Arches National or going to like the Delicate Arch, yeah, I might say, okay, I'm going to film for 10 seconds of us getting out of the van. Okay, now we're at the trailhead looking at the sign. There's another 5 or 10 seconds. Okay, now we're, we're walking past this cool thing. Okay, now there's a lizard and I'm just... When I piece this all together at the end, I see if I just it's clearly going that it's action. I'm not just okay. We're walking along. 
Oh, Isn't yeah. this awesome? Isn't, oh. it, it, so because I've listened to this book a couple times, and <laughs> you laugh at the listen to this book. <laughs> Um, that's gonna. But it's honest. It's honest because some people still say, you know, I've read this book and they really haven't. You know, they've listened to it. Yeah. yeah. But I say listen. No, so, I think that's good. And because I practice this as well, <laughs> when I when we're filming stuff, we're, we're at Disneyland and my wife wants me to film some things. I always film short clips. Of course. Because when you piece it together, it makes for a really good video. Yeah. And when my kids will take over the phone, now for me, it's kind of like been recording for a minute long we're only going to use yeah. five seconds of this so it's like stop you know only record in 10 seconds and, and just for practicality's sake you know most of, if a kid is holding a camera or anyone else for that matter they're not a tripod they don't have a steady cam vest on i mean you truly just visually you go any longer than 10 seconds and i would say much shorter even still but the movement the swaying the jittery whatever even if you have the stabilizer on it, it just it's just for variety's sake Take shots of things, be done, move on. It just, it is. It's more pleasing to the eye. And your so brain he, needs change. Yeah, he know, gives especially. a couple examples. He gives an example of a soccer game that if you were watching, you know, your child play a game of soccer and you were just filming it, you know, okay, I'm just watching my boy the whole time. Uh, oh, you know, hopefully the ball gets to him. Versus... Um, you know, you're you're watching the coach as he's getting mad. You know, like come on, guys, and then you're over here. The goalie he totally missed missed that, and then the parents are one, one parents cheering their right. kid on, and you yeah. show that kid, and you show the person with the ball. That's and a lot make... of and a lot of that's done in the edit process, right? So I mean, you might shoot a long section of the play itself so that you get it, but just don't forget to get those cutaway shots, uh -huh. reaction so, shots. So I'm going to skip ahead to this point here because he says focus on what really interests you. So if you are filming continuously, planning on editing down to the shots, you don't just follow your kid the whole time. Hopefully he gets the ball and you get some good shots right. there. <laughs> I say he, it could be she. But but if there's somebody that's angry and yelling at the ref or something, then get that. You know, Just focus on what, what's interesting you. And he also gives an example of if you're recording a band performance or a choir performance at the school and it's a 30-minute performance, if you just... My wife won't let me film in shots because she, she wants, so I'm filming the whole time. Yeah. Oh, but boy. we're never going to watch the full 30 minute yeah, thing again. Yeah, right. Right? I might send it to my in laws. My in laws will watch it one time, and that's the only view that that 30 minute video will get. But think about if I, if I had a camera with a zoom lens and I was able to zoom in to the conductor, and then, and then it switched over to my son or my daughter, and then somebody that was playing a solo is switched to that person. And then it switched over to, to somebody in the audience that's sleeping. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's at least it's entertaining. Yeah, and it's agreed. gonna get it's gonna get more views. Yeah, I mean, ideally, but we're talking about single camera stuff. But ideally, you would just have you know, if you could bring a tripod with a camera and just record the whole orchestra, the whole recital, and then pick up all these cutaway shots with uh, your phone or another camera. I mean, that would be great because then you would have that single music bed underneath that never changes mm -hmm. and you're overlaying I mean, let, let's shots. say you're a professional well, you let's say you're a professional video videographer that's gonna come in and you're gonna record well, if i were a professional yeah <laughs> and they're gonna you're gonna record this band performance for right. the high school the high school's paying you to make this video you're gonna get the master what, shot. what are you gonna do just sit you're, there and record it you're gonna well you are you're gonna get a master shot and then you're gonna go in with coverage and you're gonna take smaller B cameras, mm -hmm. so to speak. You're going to get B-roll. And, and you're going to get all kinds of people and the sleeping in the crowd. Meanwhile, you have the whole performance that you cut back to on your gonna master. Have, you're going to have separate external audio that's actually good quality. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you're going to have a camera, you know, inside the band, perhaps, inside the orchestra. So, you know, you're going to, it's going to take a lot of work. And so, you know, that's kind of the takeaway I got from this is if you're hmm. going to shoot video that doesn't suck, Here's how you make and a right video now, that people want to watch. We're just shooting an instructional video, and there's not a whole lot well, of cutaways so, that we can... So what do I do? We're only filming on one camera. Sometimes we've filmed with Sometimes three. Sometimes we do three, yeah. But my team intentionally will do crop edits, right. and we do edit out. Uh, you know, we're, this is a talking head video, yeah. which it's not as entertaining. No. You know, some people have already stopped watching this video. We thank you <laughs> for not leaving thanks us. Thanks for staying. You know, thanks for staying, because we've got some more points. And we'll be taking off our shirts as a reward. <laughs> I actually am not planning on doing that, but I'm excited to... All right. Okay. He says no zooming during shots. 
if, if you're going to be worrying about zooming in and zooming out, especially when you're using your phone and you're using your fingers to zoom in, yeah, yeah. it's, it's not stable. I mean, if you, if you know what you're doing, there are professional ways of zooming that's yes. like cinematic, yeah. but in most cases it looks terrible and you should just crop it afterwards. Just film it in full resolution, right. crop it or zoom in afterwards. Cause it's real easy to do in the editing software. So that's his advice. Or if a style, again, depending on what camera you're using, but if it is just an iPhone, yeah, the zoom does look terrible, especially it, because just, it gets digitized. It, it's not after. optical. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and the other thing too is, if, but if you do happen to have an SLR camera and you know you have the ability to do snap zooms and things like that, I mean, stylistically, sometimes those look pretty cool. They go out of focus a little bit. You pull the focus on it. I mean, that's kind of fun, mm -hmm. but I think, yeah, he's probably just generally yeah, these, talking. These are, these are kind of like default rules. To, yeah, yeah. to follow and if you're gonna if you're gonna break the rule you'll obviously have a reason for doing that and you're you probably know what you're doing by yeah. that point so the next one is he recommends just turn off the camera's digital effects you don't want any color enhancement <laughs> or you know it, it's just it's funny. the comic the comic book look if you want the... if you want your video to do well and to be more professional just turn those things off we talked about focus on what really interests you don't use amateur titles uh, honestly, like you think, ooh, I'm going to put this cool text effect in there. Right. A lot of times it just makes it look the cheesy. The spinning door, with yeah. smoke coming off like, of it or whatever. I've, I've made a couple videos where I've used that, but I was, I, it was kind of because I wanted it to be cheesy. Like one yeah. of them, we did a, an American Ninja Warrior video of my kids pretending that they're American Ninja Warriors. And I put in some of the flashy stuff that they have just because I was right. trying to like, hey, yeah. we're pretending to make... But I didn't expect it to go viral on, on YouTube or anything like that. Or <laughs> It was just, it was fun. Okay, keep your video short. Uh, we should, this video is going a little too long. We should. Well, we've broken all the rules. We, anyway. we break, we, yeah. We're, we're explaining the rules. We have plenty of. So when I, when I make a promo video, I'll, I'll interview somebody. I don't, I haven't made one of these videos for a couple of years because I do better stuff, funner stuff. But when I used to make speaker videos, we'd interview them for 15 minutes. We're up to 12 minutes, 49 yeah. seconds. Okay. When we would film a speaker video, mm -hmm. we'd, we'd get B-roll of them on stage and all the stuff. We'd interview them for 15 minutes. Okay. But we whittled it down to like two and a half oh, minutes yeah, or, or right. three minutes. Yeah. You know, we, we always whittle it down. Think about like Hollywood videos and how there's the deleted scenes. That's got to be painful to remove why, why do they do that? Let's take your take. Why do they have to delete scenes? Uh, again, length. Um, and, you know, sometimes they just seem extraneous. You know, it takes a critical eye to actually remove a scene because people look at it and they go, it just, it isn't helping. It doesn't lend to the overall story. It doesn't move along a plot point. It's extraneous. Even though it's really funny or well acted, let's take it out. And it's the same thing with interview videos and bulk footage where you go, really, what is the message here? We, we got 15 minutes worth of footage. We're going to use 97 seconds of it because that gets to the point. And a, a video that I recently filmed and had my team edit, it was, I, I went down to Moab and biked the Slick Rock bike trail. And, and I tried to film in shots or think in shots and, and film short segments, but for a lot of the time, it's like, you know, I'm going to hit record on my, my camera here, my camera up here, and I'm expecting my team to really just Find some good moments yeah, in here. Right. And and my editor did whittle it down from like the hour and a half of footage down to like 20 minutes. But as I watch, I'm like, this is a 20 minute video. We need it to be, we need it at least the longest to be 10. <laughs> right. And you know, so it's like you just you gotta keep it, keep it short because yeah, I mean there's Well, especially you know, for the just for the editor's own sanity. You know, having well, you, to when scroll you, through I knew that would be a big project because yeah. it's like you give them, you know, an hour, two hours of, of footage, it's like this is gonna be a Whittle it down for me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, team. Whittle away. External mic. Um, I'm going to tap this. I assume that you heard that. This is a really good mic, so maybe you didn't even hear that, but I assume you did. This is a, this is a, let me hear that. Angle it. Can you see it? There you can see it. It's a Zoom H2N. I'll link to it in the, oh, I've got another one. In the box. Is there a box? I can show you. I just ordered another one because I love it so much. Where did I put my box of the? Your box of Here's H2Ns? I got another one. H2, and I didn't, I didn't even know that H2 N stands next. for next. Oh. So N stands for next. Focus on this. Well, maybe just on this particular. No, it's, it's oh, the same. It? So I got a, 
This is an unboxing video. You didn't know we were going to do something. Oh, doing. boy. We're unboxing. crossing genres here. From talking head to box opening. Ooh. Oh, it really is. Wah. We're still in the protective Kleenex. It is now not a virgin mic. It has now been touched. And it there's is, no, it's light. It's exactly the same. There's, there's no batteries in it. Yeah. I got a second one so that we can do wider stages for different things that I'm doing. And, and this can... Anyway, this is a this is a very good mic. Now, how this works, an SD card fits right in here. So, on your camera, or if you're filming here, there's a camera here, right? It's gonna film audio that if it's far away, it's it's gonna be really lousy audio. So, have another mic. You know, if, if I were to just put this mic right up out of the shot, it's close enough that it's. I mean, there's a mic right there that's this same mic that it picks up really good audio. This one's directional, so it, it kind of focuses on, on us right here and blocks out everything behind it, kind of mutes that mm -hmm. down a little bit. So then in, the, in the, the edit, you take your video that has the audio and you'll see the audio wave files with the video. And then you'll, you take out the SD card, you have a separate file that you bring in and you see the, and it just syncs it automatically or you can do it manually and visually. And moral of the story, Steve Stockman here says, Use an external microphone so that you have good audio in your videos. That's a rule that we did not break. We're, we're well, fine. hopefully it was working. You oh, be the judge. It works every time. This, this Zoom mic, I'll put a link in the description below. Highly consistent. And I will also include the link to the book because even though I just, uh, kind of spoiler alert, just ruined the book for you. It, it's actually, <laughs> I, it's, it's one that even after I've listened to it the first time, it was valuable enough that I've listened to it at least one other time just because he's... It's a, it's a good book, so if you want to make videos that don't suck, uh, go get this book. And then subscribe to this channel and uh, comment, you know. And then make your own videos that don't suck. And, and still come back and watch ours. That dude.